South African financial regulators aren't giving away the extent to which they're pursuing short seller Viceroy following the panic and sell-off it caused in Capitec shares earlier this year. Viceroy released a report alleging that Capitec tended to reissue bigger loans over longer terms to clients who were really struggling to pay their original loans. The bank strongly denied these claims, with the Reserve Bank also coming to Capitec's defence. Market regulators, the JSC and the Financial Sector Conduct Authority explained how its stock markets in South Africa are regulated. In light of recent spectacular events in relation to JSE-listed companies like Steinoff, Capitec and real estate investment company Resilient, regulators were keen to explain the process involved in regulating stock markets. The JSC has a market surveillance division. It's able to track every single trade that takes place over its exchange system. We have access to all of the trading on the market, identifying who all of the investors are. We can look at the patterns. We can see whether there's anything irregular. The JSC market regulator only regulates stockbroking firms that are registered as members of the JSC. In instances where the market surveillance team detects an unusual transaction it deems suspicious, it then passes this information on to the Financial Services Conduct Authority to investigate further. So then we conduct an investigation because we've got wider powers in terms of the Financial Markets Act to conduct an investigation. All they do is market surveillance. The issue of short selling came up. It was stated that short selling whereby an investor makes a bet that a stock price will fall was in fact legal and normal market activity. Typically, hedge funds, which play a big role in financial markets, bet on stock prices moving up or down, for example. If they believe that, that, that a share price might decline, even if they don't own the share, they can take advantage of, of that. And you would do so by borrowing the shares that you want to sell in order to deliver them as a, as a seller. Um, and if the price does in fact decline, you would then buy those shares in, uh, and return them to the person that you've borrowed them, borrowed them from. So it is perfectly normal activity, it is, very, it is very common. However, upon closer inspection, short selling could be indicative of a negative motive. If you profit out of your short selling based on false information that you've distributed, uh, if you're found guilty of distributing false information, the penalty may well be influenced by how much profit you've made on the short selling. But still, the short selling, having sold shares that you don't own, would not in itself be an offence. Given the destruction caused to the value of the Capitec share and people's investments following short seller Viceroy's allegations that the bank was essentially a loan shark, the FCSA didn't elaborate much on the extent to which it was pursuing Viceroy. We cover all bases, so without you know going into detail i mean we have made efforts to we have contacted uh, our counterparts uh, in the u.s and in the uk to try find out who viceroy is and whether they can assist us with um, our investigation with regards to uh, the viceroy research group the real estate investment trust company Resilient has lost significant value this year following allegations of deliberate systematic moves to inflate the share price at all costs. Resilient has since declared that it's commissioned an independent investigation into the allegations. The JSC has welcomed the investigation but says given that a lot of the allegations stem around market conduct with the company's shares, the ability of the company to investigate such claims would be limited. Meanwhile, the FCSA is doing its own investigation using different sources of information in its work. There is a 361 report. So that report is making allegations. To us, those are allegations. All right. So we have to study the 361 report. Okay. And test it against other evidence that we may have obtained from other witnesses. So, and once we've tested the contents of that particular report against other evidence, then we come to our own independent conclusion. The issue of Steinoff was put to the JSC. Why was that stock continuing to trade on the exchange when it had long exceeded the deadline to produce its latest annual financial results?
Davies stressed that the JSC's issuer regulation division was best placed to speak to this issue, but tried to respond to the question based on his understanding. He noted that Steinoff's shares were primarily listed in Germany. Frankfurt decided not to suspend the listing of Steinoff in terms of its listings requirements. If we had suspended uh, trading uh, or the listing in South Africa, acknowledging that it may very well then be a long-term suspension, because it could take a long term before those results are issued and the previous results are restated, you would essentially be locking all South African investors out of trading in Steinoff whilst it could continue to freely trade in Europe. And we took that into account in determining whether we thought that would be best for investors. The regulators said in instances where they were investigating market misconduct, they would usually not be in a position to give too much detail about their work, as this could be prejudicial to the parties involved. But ultimately, legislation guiding these entities seeks for financial markets to be operated with integrity and efficiency, ultimately seeking to put the investor or client first. Non-Pimedalos Ziba, SABC News, Johannesburg.